Individuals do not create rebellions, conditions do. Until they begin to adjust themselves to those conditions, rebellions will continue and they will escalate. And to fight for our liberation by any means necessary. It was the beginning of the Black Power Movement. It was also the Black and Beautiful Movement moving into second gear. I would like to think that wearing the Afro, wearing the African clothes, was a move toward Africa. To some extent, it was a form of African consciousness, an African awakening. As a result of it, African people were stimulated throughout the world. But what followed the stimulation? What institutions came out of it? What of lasting value came out of it? I do not think the Africans, the Caribbeans, or the black Americans have studied with any degree of depth and seriousness the rise of modern Japan. They went into a war and they lost. They sustained two atomic bombs. They had that country occupied now the people that defeated them are now begging them for commercial space. What did they do that we have forgotten how to do? They did some serious, astute planning. Not loud mouthing, not boasting. They did not get on the radio or any platform and call anybody any name, but they did what they had to do. If we are carrying out a well-designed program for liberation, if it's written out, any literate person can contribute and share leadership. So if the leader dies while you're on page 13, Move to page 14 and continue the struggle. Bear the man, continue the plan. I think every person that calls themselves a leader, a preacher, a policymaker of any kind should ask and answer the question in his own lifetime, how will my people stay on this earth? How will they be educated? How will they be schooled? How will they be housed? And how will they be defended? The answer to these questions will create the concept of enduring nationhood because it creates the concept of enduring responsibility. Good morning! Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers, black men, strong black men, upright black men, sober black men, together black men, unity black men, freedom black men, justice black men, welcome to the Million Man March. One million black men make their way to the nation's capital. They are answering Minister Louis Farrakhan's call for unity, redemption, and atonement. It's the largest demonstration in American history. Marching is a strategy, and I think we have gotten enough out of the strategy. I think the march is a waste of shoe leather, gas, and energy. We are one. We are one. We are one. I have some serious problems with any kind of march for our liberation.
that leaves out one half of the mentality of our people, the women. I don't buy the rationale that the women need to stay home and take care of the children, you know. Uh, I ain't buying that. If they have no honorable place in your liberation, your liberation is not worth the fight. Because you can't build no family struggle. You can't have no continuum. You can't even continue your name without that connection. Long live the spirit of the Million Man March. Long live the spirit of the Million Man March. I'm saying there's more to revolution than throwing your fist in the air. There's more to progress than marching. I want to say, my brothers, this is a very pregnant moment, pregnant with the possibility of tremendous change in our status in America and in the world. We're doing showbiz liberation, and that's not liberation. Today, whether you like it or not, God brought the idea through me, and he didn't bring it through me because my heart was dark with hatred and anti-Semitism. He didn't bring it through me because my heart was dark and I'm filled with hatred for white people and for the human family of the planet. If my heart was that dark, how is the message so bright, the message so clear, the response so magnificent? This march will do more to wash Farrakhan's ego and to project him into the forefront of leadership than anything else. And once he's in the forefront of leadership, where will he lead us? Allah Akbar! God is great! God is great! Straight to Islam. And yet he will not make a principled statement on the enslavement of Africans in Mauritania and in the Sudan. And there's all kinds of documentation, all kinds of proof if I have to be a dissenting voice in this, then I'm very pleased that I've got enough integrity to be a dissenting voice and not to care where the chips fall. Many perceive the African-American family as an endangered species. To Dr. Clark, the family is the soul, the spirit, and the cornerstone of the nation. If the family dies, so does the nation. We're making a whole new way of life out of the artificiality of imitating our oppressor, who's also in trouble with the family. And we grew up in communities where every child was a child of the whole community and could be disciplined and rewarded by anyone in the community. Now we bought into someone else's sociology. Don't touch that child. Don't you dare spank my child. Conformly, <laughs> your mother left you alone and said, if they misbehave, you, you can spank them. We don't have that kind of relationship one to the other anymore. After emancipation, we made a monumental effort to find broken bits and pieces of our family. My own grandmother, spent three years wandering around Virginia trying to find her first husband who had been sold to a slave breeding farm in Virginia. But the major thing was we were trying to put families together and to have family connections. Our new mission of liberation is to put strong families together again because the family is not only the embryo, the beginning of all that we can call civilization, but it's the beginning of all anyone can call a civilization. Because this is the essential network that leads to nation. There's some common sense things we can still be doing. Our communities are miniature nations. We have to control them control the real estate in those communities, control the education in those communities, 
You cannot write the history of this nation as though it is only a white nation. It's a multicultural nation. I'm saying whatever the solution is, either we are in charge of our own destiny or we are not in charge. On that point, we got to be clear. You're either free or you're a slave. I want people to remember me as a creative classroom teacher. I'm self-educated, and I've read more books than most men see in a lifetime. Fortunately, I still remember the better portions of most of them, but I haven't seen the last of my life or the last of my energy. So I decided if you lose your eyesight, increase your insight. Use what you got and keep on doing the things that give your life meaning and give your life definition. I like for them to remember that I have been consistent. I took certain principal stands my late teenage. Now at the age of 80, I have not discarded these principal stands. My great overpowering love affair has been the liberation and the maintenance of African people and to restore them to a status that they lost in the world. I think faith has not spared African people for an ideal purpose. If we were put on this earth and we have endured a holocaust 10 times worse than the one in Europe. Then faith has a mission for us. If we gave the world its first humanity, maybe we have the capacity to give the world its next humanity.